how to achieve the essence of your human form of life. To explore The question is always how to make the best of our life. How to understand the essence of our existence. How to relate in the most beneficial way to everyone who surrounds us. Today we will take this lesson meditating upon our great spiritual lovers of humanity and lovers of all the original cause of our existence. What they had to give and what we should try to understand so that we will be benefited to the maximum degree. The first thing we have to consider is what gives love to us and what gives disenchantment, frustration to us. The terms like love and peace, tranquility, self-esteem, joy, enjoyment, they are all terms which uh, make us feel that there is something worthwhile to be achieved. There is something we should try to obtain. The first important step in life is to understand that for achieving anything which is important to achieve, you do not need anything from the outside. You don't need any uh, type of taste enhancer or some special sensation which is going to change your perception in a positive way. What you need is your sanity. You need your clear thinking capacity. You need your devotional capacity to dedicate yourself to something worthwhile. As long as you are in the illusion to think that I can obtain something from outside which will enhance my quality, the value of my existence inside, you're completely illusion. Neither. I mean, if you are sick, you may need a medicine. If you are ignorant, you surely need a teacher. If you are thirsty, you surely need water. If you are hungry, you surely need food. But you don't need anything else for enhancing the quality of your consideration, your evaluation, your criteria, or not even for feeling joy. Joy is a state of consciousness when you feel that the things which are happening in and around you are positive, are progressive. They are hinting towards a wonderful achievement or you have already achieved something. Just like when you feel love for a person, you have already achieved that love, you feel that love. So what more is there to be obtained? Well, maybe you can increase that love by when you see how much sacrifice the person is making for you or something like this. But in no way uh, does the feeling of love lack in anything. Actually, the feeling of love is the quality of the feeling, the quality of our ability to love somebody. This is God-given. We have the ability to love someone. And that is a goal. And when you feel that, you are experiencing the goal. Yes, maybe there's more. 
Maybe at some point in life you deserve something more. Maybe. But if a father loves his children, what more love he needs? Do the children have to have four arms so that he will love them more? Huh? What does a father need? Does he need to see the children with gray hair in order to love them more? No. They'll get gray hair at some point in their life, but most likely father is not there anymore anyway. You already departed before that. So what do you need to see in your children to feel love for them or to feel that, oh, I have got something very special, very wonderful. The same thing goes for your marital partner. If you have your marriage partner, what more you want? There he or she is. And she accepts you and he accepts you. And that is a very merciful and wonderful arrangement if God is not excluded. Nowadays, marriages are just based, based on physical attraction. Oh, she's a good-looking girl. He seems to be a well-doing man, got money too. And then there may be some attraction for that platform, but that's not a long-lasting attraction. This is not. If God is not included in this, there will be some fiasco soon after. So therefore, it's very important to understand that the, the reality of a partner, the beauty of a partner, is in doing something with them for the same goal. Because partner doesn't mean you sit there, I sit here, and we just gaze at each other. Oh, so wonderful you exist. And I'm so happy you exist. And you're just telling these to each other. I mean, this is going to be very boring <laughs> after a very short time. Even though really it's so, but the, the human form of life means action. We have to be active. We cannot just sit and contemplate. It goes against our very creation, or let's say design. Because your design has this mouth and you want to put food inside. And the food doesn't come flying with wings, so you have to go and get it. So the design of this world is a working world. But your children, your partner, this is a bliss in its own. The same thing now apply it to devotion. You already got Krishna, you already got the Bhagavad Gita. You already got the holy name of Krishna. You already got the deity. You already got prasadam. You already got devotees, friends, elders, youngers, newcomers, needy people. Maybe you don't have a temple, then open one. Then make one. What's the big problem? Anybody wants to make a temple can make a temple. Anybody wants to live and help others, he can help others. My point is, you as a devotee, you don't need anything from the future. You have everything in the present. You have to understand to see things with the eyes of gratefulness. You have to be very grateful. Yes, my Lord gave me this service. He gave me these wonderful people to associate with. He gave me something to do. I'm so happy. And now, work. What else do you have to do? Do something with it. Do something for it. Share it with others. Come on. Don't wait too long. Because you may become just old before you know. So do something. People in the world, they always think, I'm poor, I need money. When I get money, I buy something. When I buy something and have it and look at it, then I'll be happy. Something like this. It's like, a, it's always projecting into the future. But at the moment, you what you're doing? Oh, I'm working. You like it? No. 
Do you like your boss? No. Why do you do it? Because I need money. Why you need money? Because I want to buy things. Why you want to buy things? Because then I'll be happy. So now you're unhappy so that you'll be happy in the future. But when you buy this thing, finally you're not that happy as you thought you would be. <laughs> so it was all a, a hoax. And even though you thought you'll be happy, you don't make anybody happy. No. All your efforts were only spent for yourself. And this is not very satisfying. And Krishna is not very happy with that either. So you're not making spiritual advancement. As a matter of fact, there's no advancement. Even if you buy a car, the cars are designed in such a way nowadays that after five years they start going breaking and after 10 years they're finished. So they are not meant either to enjoy. The cars are just made to transport you. And you can transport yourself to something stupid and you can transport yourself to something wonderful. I mean, just when you look at the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you know the devotees in those old days, they would go on pilgrimage they would go to Rasa Yatra, but they would walk there 1,000 kilometers. And they would go. So that means they were also rich. Because if you can stop your work and just walk for one month to another place to, <laughs> to, to have a religious festival. And then you walk back in another month. <laughs> so they, either they were very well to do or they were very, very humble and very simple. But whatever they were, they were not people who went along the way gave trouble to the locals. Not that they came there like bandits and says, give me food. No. They were Vaishnavas, they were very gentle. So, in other words, whatever they were, they were very determined and they were very lucky. Because they went to, to Rasa Yatra walking for months. That means the whole month was spent in devotional service. Walking, 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 walking. And I guarantee you, they didn't just walk. They chanted all along. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama. So they were walk walking, they were probably eating very simply. Who knows? I don't remember. I don't know. But who knows? I'm sure they were living very simply in those days. Maybe eating some vegetables, cooking at night, something. Maybe they had money so they could buy from the local farmers some produce or maybe they did madukari. Madukari in India is like that. Whenever a person is engaged in some religious activity, he deserves some support from the others. So if a person comes to your door and he begs for a little food and you know he's doing some spiritual activity, you, you're feeling fortunate that he has come to your door and you invite him for a meal. So maybe that's the way they did. I really don't know. Actually, Chaitanya Chaitamita properly says it, but I have to read again to see how they were organizing their eating. I know Shivananda Sena was one of the tour leaders and he organized things for all. So maybe they had some money for the trip, no? And of course, I don't know what currency was there at that time in Bengal. How did they do? I, I'm sure they didn't have any credit cards. Huh? <laughs> so some system was there, and they got there. They danced in the Rasa Yatra. They saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They were completely in nectar, in ecstasy. 
stayed maybe for a month there. I, I'm not sure how long they stayed. And then they walked back to Bengal to their family. So how much bliss is there? How much austerity? How much, uh, bl how much blessing is there? Of course, we also do that, right? We go to Vindavan and visit the Holy Dharma and go and see all the places related to Krishna's childhood pastime. And we fought to feel bliss. And we also saved up some money for that. It also has some cost. And we give a donation everywhere in the temples we visit. We are not going there to utilize them. We go there to, to purify ourselves. You see, this is a practical example of spiritual experience and spiritual joy. They were meditating for one month constantly on Lord Krishna, Lord Jagannath, Lord Chaitanya. We are going to Rasayatra, we are going to Rasayatra. But if you walk 40, 50, 60 kilometers a day, you get tired. That's working. And that's the way they had to walk in order to get there. So our two-legged vehicle was moving around. Walking was the style. I'm going to Vendaven. That meant two months of walking. <laughs> so it was true. I am going. So there's a lot of... Uh, walking. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna, Hari, Hari. <laughs> and they were very happy. They were happy walking and chanting. They didn't go to any movie houses on the way. They had no distractions, no. But of course, everywhere they saw the rivers, they saw the mountains, they saw the, the jungles. They saw so many wonderful things of Lord Krishna's creation. So, for one who sees me everywhere, sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. So they learned how to see Krishna everywhere. This is the way you have to learn how to see the world. You have to learn that. Then you will have no more lamentation and no more problems in your whole existence. Everything will be fine. If you understand that Krishna consciousness means appreciating Krishna. Like now I'm thinking of Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada. So if I'm thinking of Prabhupada, you know what that means? That is already the perfection of my life. Because I'm thinking of my guru. I'm thinking of a pure devotee. I'm thinking of somebody who lived for Krishna. Prabhupada was a living saint. And he, everything he did, it indicated clearly that the only thing important to him was divine love. He was a teacher of divine love. He was a preacher of divine love. He was a liver of divine love. He was a beggar of divine love. He was a representative of divine love. He was a distributor of divine love. Authorized distributor. And I think of him. Oh my God. You know in this material world, people love somebody or appreciate somebody. They can get very emotional about it. Sometimes young girls, they fall in love with a film star or with a music star. 
And when he actually comes to the airport, they go and say, oh, we're going to see our star. And then they see him and they see him, some of them faint. Oh, tears, there he is. They go to pass out. So amazing. This is how emotional they can get over this star. Because when you think of somebody, that somebody manifests in one way or another. He becomes present there. And when you think of Krishna, Krishna also becomes present there. So therefore, when I think of my guru, I think of Krishna, this is the perfection of my thinking ability. I don't have to see stars coming out of other people's heads or have some kind of hallucinations, seeing all these things like colors floating in each other like an LSD trip or something. This hallucination, psychedelics, they call it. Where the lines, the lines are not more clearly defined. Where everything goes like bubbling into each other. And you lose the, the, the precision. This is what we should not forget. Krishna consciousness is not so complicated. It means hard work for a high consciousness. And that high consciousness is available to us in the meditation on the pure devotee and on Lord Krishna. We meditate on them and all the perfection is there. Is there anything higher? Yes. More love. How do you get more love? By appreciating what you got already and cultivating it. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Vandanam, Dasya, Matmani, Vedanam. By being deeply absorbed in this, And like here, we are now in the open air theater. It's called the Oak Tree Theater in Naimisharanya, the forest of Naimisharanya, where the Bhagavatam was spoken and where everybody could understand. When you understand what you got is so valuable, then you have a happy life. If you think what you have has no value, then you have a miserable life. Now I got this little flower in my hand. This is a smile of Krishna. It's so beautiful. It is so valuable. It makes my life worse to only look at such a flower or to look at such an oak tree, a brother, 200 years old brother who has been here doing tapasya and after all the tapasya the holy name came to his feet huh? it was all worth the time to make tapasya now he finally in his old age already many branches are drying out he's getting kirtan he's getting prashadam put some water at his feet from Krishna's altar and we're going to have nice spiritual meetings here. What more can you desire? As a matter of fact, every time there's a kirtan going on, he's also listening. So he's in ecstasy. His soul is being given and not only this big oak tree but all the f creepers and all the all the animals they are they are so blessed even the insects they are also blessed from Krishna's mercy through the holy name that is the face we have in the holy name It is so powerful, the holy name, that everything unfortunate becomes fortunate in the contact with the holy name. So therefore a devotee, he doesn't have to be in anxiety. 
all he has to do take out his treasure bag put in his hand grab the, the beats of freedom and just go on with the holy name of love Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare in, in the material world, in Spanish, they say, personas invierten en la bolsa de valores. Y es el, los devotos, esta es su bolsa de valores. Aquí hacemos nuestras investiciones de nuestro tiempo. Huh? It's like the stock market in Spanish means la bolsa. And this is also called una bolsa mm -hmm. so you can invest in this bag you will get the biggest returns it is not a mental adjustment it is a factual reality that everything we have is by God's grace but if we don't remember it if we think it is something else then we cannot appreciate it. We cannot appreciate it. If I was going to construct a natural theater, I could easily come up with this design. This beautiful stage with the backgrounds, with the rocks and the creepers. This is a natural stage. And here, Krishna has given it to, to us, just like this. So, everything in Krishna consciousness becomes so meaningful, so beautiful. The green of the trees make your mind sane. When you live in the concrete environment and don't see any greenery, you easily go insane from so there are so many beautiful things. Why do we need all these electronic gadgets, all these, all these crazy attempts of happiness by making electronic noise called techno music? Why do we need that? As a matter of fact, we do not need it. We will not be more happy in this way. We will be happy if we make the things which God has given to us beautiful. Okay? Even if somebody makes techno music for Krishna, then he's also getting purification because whatever we do in connection with Krishna becomes purified. Like my family was a musical family and I was accustomed to see them when they were playing extremely sophisticated, beautiful musics from the classical composers. But I remember that always after they were having their, uh, their musical presentation, then right after they had to go somewhere and start drinking alcohol. Why? Why were not, they not completely satisfied after having heard such nice music and such excellent performance? Because they were not satisfied. Now they needed to get the kick of the alcohol. So this nonsense is going on in this world and we don't believe in it at all. We want to get the real spirit. We want to get the love the very, very essence of everything, the spirit of love. And that spirit of love you cannot buy in any shop. Not even in the richest people's shop can you buy a drop of love. You cannot get it in any school universities you think you can get love there you get love when you preach because you give love 
Because you can preach in the universities too. It's not so easy, but why not? There's many young people there. Why not preach there like anything? But most people don't do it because they're too foolish. They just go there hoping that they get some easy money, money income later when they got their titles. And they're thinking like conservatives. Oh, I need some solid income, so I need to do this, I need to do that. But you don't even know if you're going to live to get your title. You may die a week before you're supposed to get your title. You don't know you're going to have a work with your title. In South America, every second taxi driver is a university graduate who didn't find a job after he graduated. So it's all, it's all, it's all fantasies we have. But preaching is not a fantasy. Preaching is a today, now and today. Take something. Drupadi sees every day she goes to university for selling prashada. She sees all the young kids, they're coming there and sitting down and only talking blah, 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 blah. And then lucky they are to eat some prashad. But only when you give love, then your life is meaningful. Only then. Otherwise, no. No way. No way you're going to have anything beneficial. Not in counting money, not in having position in this world. People say, what about getting safe income? Well, that's a big story, the safe income question. How to get safe income? Well, in the mostly of the safe incomes means you cannot preach at all. So-called so safe incomes. So what do you do? Well, you can have, find something where you can preach and have an income. That is an acceptable solution for a Vaishnava. Safe income. If you have a job, but you just work, 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 and you can never speak really openly, that is a chastisement. You're condemned. I know many people, yeah, this Maharaj, he just come from a job where he worked for 40 years or something, 30, 20. He was a teacher, very successful man. I mean, he had a job build himself a house, lucky, good wife he had before he took sannyas. But he always complained to me, I cannot say anything in my school. I cannot even give one opinion of mine. Maybe hiddenly you can say something, but you cannot even tell the children, come on, let's go to a Sunday feast can't even give prasadam to them because it looks strange when the teacher brings food to the school for all the kids. Say, what is he doing? So what is this? Was it a blessing? Well, it was his karma he went through, but he was always thinking, when will I get out of it? Now he got out of it. And luckily he can still walk. But if you would have chosen that, because we are from the same age, so we started at the same time with the same guru. How you like the open air theater? Beautiful. Yes. Shanket van Kijai. So then, I didn't do that, what he did. I didn't study, because I was more lucky than him. They kicked me out from high school. <coughs> they thought I was useless for that system, and they were right. I was useless for that system, because I didn't like that system. Even before I came to Krishna consciousness, 
I didn't like it. And the people I love, I tell them I don't like it. It's not a good system. If you want to do something good, do something good in the area where you can also speak about Krishna. Openly, honestly, and hopefully make some money too. So what is the big thing of making money? The people who may make most money, usually they didn't study anything. They're just buying and selling something. They're lucky, they have this karma. And buying and selling, you don't learn in school. Buying and selling, you learn from people who buy and sell. But even buying and selling is boring. How many of you have been buying and selling? This fellow here, buying and selling for so many years. And where, like they, they say in Spanish, fuera de gastos no hubo rastros. Außer Spesen nichts gewesen. Hm? <laughs> That's what they say in German, no? Yeah. Hmm? I don't know what's the English saying for it. You, you know? Außer Spesen nichts gewesen. When you do something, you always have some expenditures. That uh, in English you call it the. Uh, there is one phrase, but it's different. Yeah, the the business expenditure. You you were supposed to make money, but only thing you did is spend while you were trying to make money, but there's nothing left in the end. Something like that. So wasted of time. But when you preach, you don't waste time. You need money? Okay, then you get to get money. I always got money when I needed money. Krishna always provided it. Krishna didn't let me go, oh, now you're not having a job, you're not having this, you're not having that. Because I'm preaching and I'm using everything for Krishna, and how many beautiful souls I have been contacting all these years and how much connections is with them because we are talking about one single thing. Krishna, loving service, uh, how to organize things in this world to get more closer to Krishna. Just wonderful. Imagining, imagining to be a a sports teacher in this world, teaching sports. Now put the leg up, now put the arm here, now put a little, lift your body. Uh -huh. And you, nothing, you can't speak about the soul, it's only body consciousness. And if it's a school, you can't say anything. Like all teachers in Europe, they can't say a word. Schools are completely indoctrinated by materialism. So if you want to do anything with teaching, or can they say, I want to open a real school for Vaishnavas and for people open-minded, okay, and then I say, wow, this person is incredible. He or she wants to make a school or something. And what does it mean? It means really reaching the hearts. Now, it's okay. You may be making some money. And you may even help Krishna consciousness with your money, which is very rare. Most people, as soon as they start getting money in the hand, they start trembling. Oh, 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 oh my money. Oh, oh. Huh? They go on a trip. My money, my money. What am I going to do? I got to put it in a bank. And then I get 6% interest a year. And then they put it down to four. And then they put it down to three. And then they put it down to two and a half. But the inflation goes up by 15, uh, 18. So instead of making money in the bank, in the end of the year, you have less money. 
than you had in the beginning despite the interest. Is it like this or not? What do you say? You're right. So now I have some money and I'm in anxiety because the bank is taking every year away my money. They're using it. I am not using it. Ah, my money, my money, my money. What do I do with my money? Money is money. It is not funny. Let me, let me invest my money. Oh my God, but how? Maybe I buy a house. Yes, 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 I buy a house. I buy a house and then the real estate market drops and you, your house is not even worth what you paid for it. In the US, real estate dropped in some places from 100,000 value to 25,000. That's three times value loss. I don't know, it's like 75%. And it, it's hard to, to calculate how much is the loss. Like 75%. A 300% loss. 300%. A 300% loss. That means in business, you never make 300% up. But within a few months, 300% loss, and most people, they had debts on their houses, so not only that, okay, I also had a house there, temple house, not my house, of course, the sannyasi, I don't have a place in this bird, in this world, not even to drop debt. Hmm? I don't want to have a place in this world, this is not my place, I don't want to be attached here. So, so, but. Mm, that temple house I have, that was worth 100,000, now it's worth 30,000 maybe. But because I don't owe any penny to the bank, so for me it's the same because I'm living in the same house before as I'm living, so now people say it's worth less, so what do I care? But in a business, well, now if I would have owed money on this, and you know, in the credit world, they always try to push you to take credit. I got before from the bank, they sent me a, a check of $30,000. Why? They said, well, you owe a house. Here's your 30000 Come and get it. Of course, that meant I owe it to them. But they already sent me the check. That means $30,000 credit approval is already there. Because they can see from the file, he owns the house and he doesn't owe, there's no debt on it. Come, take your 30000 So if somebody tells you, hey, take $30,000, it's enticing. What am I going to do with 30000 no? Like that. And so most of the people in the world, the majority, they were hit by the crisis deep in debt. And they went bankrupt. Millions of people lost their homes last year. Not 50 years ago or 200 years ago, last year. So where are you going to invest your money? You don't even know. You get money, you get a headache. There's no happiness there. The bank is going to take it or the real estate is going to take it or the thieves are going to take it. So where do you put it? Now everybody invests in the gold market. <laughs> gold. Gold, it shines. <laughs> and they go, gold has always been a value. Hmm? Now the gold is at what? $1,200 an ounce? Huh? What is it? $1,200 or? $1,200, yeah. Huh? $1,200 an ounce. But people forget that it was at $700, $800, maybe 16, 17 years ago, and then it all of a sudden dropped to 400 So. Now people investing in gold, they're all going to lose their money. Mark my words for it. It's just cheating. This is the business scheme. They create illusionary investment funds, just like this guy in the United States who just stole, I don't remember, $300 billion. Did you get the number? Three hundred billion dollars. He stole. You know how? Because he gave big interests for a while. 
Of course, he was backed up by the big money people. There wasn't something one man thought out himself. No, no, no. The big bankers, they said, come on, we do the big coup. This is called the coup, the biggest coup in history. So they started to give 18% interest on the investments. One, two, three. In the business world, everybody. What? 18%? And he went and he spread this message around and big investment firms who had billions of dollars invested in him. I'm sure he paid this amount maybe for th four, five, six years. So it created confidence and somebody thought this guy's a genius. That was a big, big, and it runs over one man. One man takes the blame, but it's not one man. It is the gang of the rich taking away the money from the silly others. And this time, it was so big, the cheating, $150 billion disappeared. I mean, for you, you don't have, you don't even have five thousand dollars savings, so you you don't you, you you don't your mind doesn't reach those heights, no. I mean, when you hear million, oh, million, but a million—that's what a house costs these days. Huh? A big, nice house—that's a million dollars. Is not anymore a million, there's so much money. They have already decreased the value, the acquisition value. So really what's happening is, my dear friends, this is a place of the cheaters. The cheaters and the cheated. And the cheaters are being cheated. And the cheated are going to be cheaters. So how you want to invest in that place? Invest in preaching. Invest your time in preaching. Invest your life in preaching. Become a solid preacher and believe in that, that you will get all the fortune. And that's my training I'm offering. That's what I'm living. I believe it. It's hard as well. Who knows? Here, Yoga Shakti, they work hard by a little place. And now, it's going to be a place for people raising their consciousness in Mallorca. It's worth the while, it's worth the struggle. What, who, what do we care for the real estate market, really? Pay it off as fast as you can. You don't have any debts and you just focus on preaching, preaching. If you need money, cook prashadam and sell it. At least people need to eat doesn't matter what crisis. After the Second World War, the, the joke was that the farmers who had little land and who were growing some food, those farmers, they could put the Persian carpets inside of their pig hall because the people to get something to eat from them would give them anything they had. What you need, a, 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 a fancy clock, take it, but give me some potatoes. Everything was, was in the consumer market, uh, like uh, quoted like very great valuables, that all was useless when there was no food. So this is my honest appreciation. And then to be a revolutionary in this, yes, I even have a new branch of the revolution called Oida therapy. I don't know what's going to come from that, but something far out is already coming.
because it is a unique contribution to the communication between men. People go for any kind of therapy. Huh? Hot stone therapy, huh? laughing therapy, put your head in the ground therapy. Huh? They got any kind of silly, stupid therapy which helps nothing. But the Oida therapy is the appreciation that go beyond discrimination, go beyond uh, eagerness to be better than other competition and, and, and just go beyond everything. Reach the level of the beautiful faith of your soul. This is our real treasure. Something we are just developing. I mean, Germany doesn't have any translations yet, but don't worry, in about 50 years you also get some translation there. But the Russians be first. This is a concrete proposal, a concrete <coughs> plan, a concrete work, but it's an investment also, because you're not sure what's going to come from it. What will come from it is what you are putting in. I'm putting in. I'm even inviting people like Damo Dalila. She had a very good paying job in the Red Cross. And we talked about it, I said, forget about that. We do something for the souls. So I'm an extremist. I even give up and tell somebody, give up something. It's not fulfilling your heart's demand. You're not happy there to be that. There's more to be done in life. Okay, then you have to sacrifice. Because she could say, yeah, let me first work there a few years. When I get the pension, then we can work on other things. Huh? That's because I really believe that the soul is the only satisfaction. And we should gain our, our, our profits on the level of the soul. Or you work hard like Dina Bandu doing business, but as soon as you close shop, run to the temple and give lectures and enthuse the Hindus. Let's do something beautiful. Because this is all occupational therapy. You know what that means? It's something to do which makes sense, which heals you. If you don't do anything which satisfies you, then you become depressed. And today, depression is the biggest of all difficulties. Depression is what hits people left and right. Any questions? We have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion, as you can see. What we want to do with our life. we get what we deserve. We believe in Krishna, but we will get what we deserve. So by serving Krishna from whole heart, you deserve something better all the time. And it's funny. Like when I was a young boy, Many times I liked a girl, and I was shy like everybody, and I was looking, hey, how are you going to talk to this girl? Maybe, maybe she's interested in me too. And usually I was frustrated. So within that frustration, you wonder, what is this life all about? You like this girl, and she don't like you. 
and then you get very shy. In India, the boys don't have that problem because their parents look for the girl. Huh? But in a Western country like that. Then my life changed. I had some realization and I understood that I want to be a monk. But very funny, after I became a monk, then it was the opposite way around. The women were coming to me and say, why don't you get married? I said, because I'm a monk. Yes, but you could change your mind. Huh? <laughs> What's the opposite way around? Huh? So Krishna tests you. I tell you, whatever you do in life, you will be tested. It's good. Krishna wants to say. Krishna wants to see. You are his for real or not. I don't mind people get married when the marriage is very spiritual. Like my Guru Dev said, I could have had 100 children if I would have brought up 100 Krishna conscious kids. I wouldn't have minded that. But he took sannyas, he never got married, and he, he had more than 100 kids because all his disciples are also his kids. You see? So if you get married and you make your children Krishna consciousness, Krishna conscious. Wow, you have a wonderful, a wonderful job. Really wonderful. What a good luck to have that.